Hi, are you heroes, villains, and innocent bystanders? Welcome to another episode of A Angel and Her Unicorn comic book reviews. I'm Alan the Unicorn, and this is Kelly the Dragon. She's going to be with me to reviewing and spoiling books, um, mm-hmm. so we will have spoilers. So if you haven't read your books for the week, so make sure you pause the video, read your books, and then come back and, and take a look. Also, eventually, I'll have the times of each book in down below. And uh, that way, if you don't want to listen to us ramble on, you can skip right to what you want to listen to and listen to that. Um, so I'm going to let Kelly start off first. Um, she read a couple books this week. So what are you going to do first? We have My Little Pony Nightmare Nights. Okay, and the writer is Jeremy Whitley. And the artist is... Tony... I know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Fleece. <laughs> Fleece. I'm sorry if it's wrong. Uh, so, in this book, what happens? Uh, in this book, at first, Luna and the cat, and if you... What movie is it? The My Little Pony movie? Yes, the mm-hmm. My Little Pony movie. You should watch that before you read this comic book, because you need to know all the characters That's from actually that. really good advice, yeah. Because <laughs> so, some of the characters are from not only the show, but also from the movie. Yes. Yeah. And so they're in this, like, area or, like, game place. And it's important to know, though, this is the first one you've read, right? Yes. And this is number three, so she's kind of jumping on. So it wasn't, there wasn't quite a lot of, you don't know exactly how they got to this point quite yet. And it, there is Tracy and this guy who, it's Wheel of Magic Mm -hmm. with Trixie and this guy and Luna comes on and talks to her, and then what is her name? I Which forgot. one? The the. Oh yeah, the uh, the broken horn. Yes, the and broken horn. Dark something. It says her name eventually. Yes, and then she starts to scream at the guy who is by the Ferris wheel, and then blast him. She blasts the wheel, trying to make it a, a distraction. And her name is uh, Tempest. That's what Tempest. it is. Tempest. But they're all in disguise, so they all have actual different names. Yes. So it kind of talks about the beginning, how they have like different names, and the, like their disguise name, which is kind of funny, because their disguise name sounds pretty much just like their and real then, name. <laughs> <laughs> and they're at this game. Some people start to call her name. She starts to cry, and then they leave. And then this really beautiful, fiery pony. Well, I think this is supposed to be like the dark, evil aspect of Celestia. Like yes. it's like Day. Her name is Daybreaker, and she's yes. kind of like the evil Look. version of Celeste, Queen Celestia. And then they in the book it did say something about them being related or something. Which part? Them two. Oh, well, she's just saying that, you know, she's she, she's going to hold them off so that uh, 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 Luna you... can go and do what she needs to do. So she's going to fight Daybreaker and kind of cause a distraction is basically what she's doing. And there's this really beautiful, like, splash page where it's got, like, them battling, which is really cool. Yes. I really liked the art on Yeah, this the art was really, really good. And then all of them run off, and then the the... the all the other people besides Tempest go and they run into dogs and one of the characters is and a the cat. cat. So they have a cat and dog moment. <laughs> yes. Which is kind of fun. And then uh, Trixie kind of saves the day. Yeah, she's like, she calls them dad dogs and <laughs> hits them with a newspaper for a roll, which is funny. And yeah, and they all run away. So it seems like the each, each as they go along, they're kind of losing each, a person uh, uh, through each it's, thing. Mm-hmm. So they kind of get through their little adventure, and Luna finally escapes or tries to get get out of there. And Trixie wants to go off and do a magic show, and Luna tells her no because she has a big part. Mm-hmm. And then Tempest goes off to this like castle thing, and she's chained up. And then she talks to Daybreaker and whoever this bird lady is. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I don't know who she is either. She's but she's got like a big queen, like Regal. 
headpiece and this she's, cool staff. Yeah. So she looks kind of like intimidating, but she's trying to get information. Yeah, and then she kind of sends her into like a nightmare mm-hmm. and shows her all this stuff. And then she goes off and fights the other team. I Yeah, if I remember yep. it. The bird, the bird lady gets the information she needs, like and, who's with them or who's who's there. And so she sends... And then Daybreaker kind of stays there. And then the bird lady goes off and goes fight the team. And then <laughs> Trixie gets blown up when she sees um, Twilight Sparkle. But it's not Twilight Sparkle. It's like the Great Twyla. Yeah, the Great She's Twyla. like the evil version of Twilight Sparkle, I guess, is what yeah. it's supposed to be. And they <laughs> ream at each other and get mad at each other. And then they fight with... Apparently, a bunny and a dragon. Yeah, which I thought was kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Which, was, it was a really great splash page with them kind of sitting there battling it out with this yeah. little... Yeah. And so then they go back to the throne, and then what made me so angry was two of the characters are in, like, this kind of room with the throne, and the bird lady's like, you're looking for me? And then it says at the very bottom, to be continued. Da 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 da. Uh, but then they have a little small backup a little yeah. story about uh, the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Mm-hmm. And so it's just about them kind of going to the zoo. And, and finding people's. Trying to find their Cutie Marks. And, then, and they get possessed. Mm-hmm. By something. And then since all of the Cutie Mark Crusaders are basically little sisters to be. To, to the bigger ponies. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then on the very next page, it says, to be continued. Again. Again. <laughs> so now we're going to have to definitely read next issue. Mm-hmm. So, story-wise, what did you think? I really liked it. I would for sure give it a four out of five unicorn horns. Yeah, it was a fun story. Like, I thought the story was kind of how there was... There was some weight to it, but it wasn't, like, too scary. It was still very, like, I think age-appropriate for what the book was for. Um, I think the story was easy to follow, had mm-hmm. some fun dialogue. It's kind of the funny, the cat and dog thing, and then Trixie kind of doing that. That was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite part? Probably when um, the two battle scenes. Yeah. The... Splash pages. Yeah, they were really they were really good. That one is really pretty impressive. Yeah. I really like that I one. I really liked yeah. how the Tony did yeah. the art. Now, uh, so you think the art was really good then? Mm-hmm. And what about the backup story? Because the backup story was a little bit, it was a different artist. It was a little bit more cartoony, but I really liked it. Again, it kind of fits that kind of My Little Pony feel. Mm-hmm. You think it, yeah? So you said you would read it another one? Mm-hmm. Awesome. For sure. All right. Well... I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do Justice League Dark. I'm gonna do number six, and this has actually uh, been a really good book. Uh, James T. Tinian and Daniel Sempre um, are the writers and artists. Uh, they have been doing a really good job of creating these characters um, and paying homage not only to the old series but making it their kind of own. Uh, I had a really lot of reservations when they brought on these new casts, and I just really wasn't a fan of it. But they've kind of they've done really well with figuring out what the old cast like not not just totally dismissing them, but also including them in it. Um, so in this particular issue, they have traveled to um, the magical land, and they're trying to save it because the magical land is being uh, overrun by zombies. And they meet Blue Devil, and Blue Devil was one of the old people that was on the old group. But uh, they hadn't brought brought him up since since now, and so you yeah. weren't for sure what had happened. Um, but they in the past stories, uh, Bobo the, the detective chimp, he has become the master of this magical realm because he, when the night master passed away, he passed the sword on to Bobo, and he is supposed to uh, protect the land. Well, he didn't. He kind of Blue Devil's kind of helping him, and so he took him to this land and then he left blue devil in the land and he's just like good luck and he just leaves him (laughs) well they kind of find out that the reason why the dead are um in there is because bobo was trying to resurrect the night uh his friend who died and when he did it he broke he kind of broke death he kind of broke the rules of death in this magical land so that's why the dead come back 
and that's why they are able to be kind of kind of become zombies. So most of the book is focused on that, but there are a little side story about um, uh, Doctor Fate and the Phantom Stranger are battling it out, um, and uh, Swamp Thing and Constantine are kind of uh, side people watching it uh, play out and hoping that um, that Phantom the Phantom Stranger can actually help and stop uh, Doctor Fate. This is really good art, though. Yes, and the story is really good. Like, even though it's got a little wordy in it, it really does work well for the story. The dialogue is actually really easy to read. It's not really complicated. And the one thing I really love about this book is that I was actually surprised about was Wonder Woman. I didn't think I would like her in the magic book, even though she's kind of a magical character. I didn't think it would be a good one, good mm-hmm. fit. But she's actually fit in really well, and they write her really well in this. And they don't make her, uh, like, a, all of a sudden a magical authority. They make her more of a side person. She's, like, always questioning, like, why is it like this? What can I... She can't, It's almost like she's learning things as she goes along, which I kind of like about that about that, uh, about this book. Um, but the sad part is they actually write her better in this book than they do her actual own book, which Wonder Woman book right now is not my favorite, unfortunately. But this particular book, she's written really well, and I really like the way that they've done it, um... So they have figured out that if um, the only way that they can break the spell is to kill the detective chimp. But Wonder Woman kind of has a talk with them and she's like, you know, he, he's kind of like sad and he's depressed because his friend's gone. And she's like, she tells him, she basically explains to him, you know, you need to live to keep his message going. You know, why are you giving up? All this kind of stuff. Gives his rousing little speech. Um, and she breaks him out of prison. So uh, then it cuts back to Dr. Fate, and Dr. Fate actually um, absorbs the Phantom Stranger into his helmet. So uh, the one person that was hopefully going to be able to powerful enough to stop him is not going to be able to. Um, and they cut back to the, to the other land, Myra, Mira, and they um, are trying to figure it out. And Detective Chimp comes in, and he's like, I know these dead languages, so let me help you. So he starts reading the books, and Wonder Woman and Blue Devil go out to help stop the hordes of demons, or the undead. Uh, they cut back to uh, the, the Dr. Fate. He's getting ready to um, destroy the Swamp Thing and uh, Constantine. And uh, they go on and... Um, uh, uh, Constantine sends, sends a message to Zatanna. So he cuts his arm up, and you don't find out the message till later. Um, but then he gets sucked into the helmet of Dr. Fate. Uh, they cut back to Myra, and they say... They stopped death. Basically, Dr. Chimp realizes he must have passed out when he was drunk. And he didn't close the door to death. So he closes the door. He fixes it. So all the zombies are gone. Blue Devil decides to stay. Um, and then all the team goes back to the, um, uh, uh, the, the Oblivion Bar. And all of a sudden, Zatanna's arm hurts and it's bleeding. And it says, find Mordor, which is Dr. Fate's old villain. So I think they're going to have to find him to stop Dr. Fate. Um, and then uh, Swamp Thing comes in. He goes, the gates are open. We're basically going to magical war. So, really intense book, <laughs> but it's really, really good. Um, if you're a team book person, I really think this would be a good one. If you are a magic person, this is a really good one. If you're a fan of any of the characters, they actually really do well of keeping all of them, um, giving them their own little time to shine sometimes, mm-hmm. um, even when they're not in the main story they still give them little little words and stuff like that that are kind of fun um so really good book the art is really good i really like the art it really fits well the artist does uh, extremely well uh, portraying all the characters and kind of giving them their own looks um Mm -hmm. so yeah i would give this almost a four out of five or a five out of five um close to that for uh unicorn horns uh really good book so all right what's your next one uh, let's do the... Which one do you want to do? you want to do Wasp or uh, no, Let's do Squirrel. All right. Squirrel Girl. So, Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, number 39. It, the uh, writer is Ryan... North. And Derek Charm. And Derek Charm actually has done a bunch of the... Jughead Comics, The Powerpuff Girl, and a bunch of the uh, Starbursts. Well, she has kind of even told me that she has researched, and I just found this out. So it's actually kind of funny. Because yeah. <laughs> I asked her how she knew, and she goes, I looked it up on the internet. Duh. <laughs> so, in this book... It starts out with 
Squirrel Girl. And again, this is your first time you've read these, right? Yes. So you don't know any of the history of the old ones. So no. this is number 39. So you're coming in the middle, just jumping in it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, it starts out with Squirrel Girl and Nancy and Iron Man. Uh, something is shooting at them and... This they... computer, this computer is shooting at them that Iron Man's controlling. Yes. Yeah. And they're battling, more battling. <laughs> she's And as she's <laughs> battling, she's going through her head, like, all these different people, like, what they would, uh... You know, how would they do? How would they do this? How would they do this? Trying to figure it out. And she settles on this mean girl that apparently is really smart. Yes. And more battling. <laughs> Even more... And then, actually, Iron Man is actually not the real Iron Man. It is an alien. A scroll. Da, 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 da. Yes. And so, the alien girl kind of disappears. And then, she Squirrel Girl jumps off a building. Not smart. No, she wasn't very smart. And then, they go back to this, the next day, kind of underground place yeah well i think it's just like a coffee shop i think they're just at a coffee shop and they're trying to figure out what their next move is but she's got the whole pe- the whole gang together and several hours later still working on that and then and they're trying to find tony stark and then it shows a computer research and it has like a pattern yeah and more researches and they split up and they go to different places to make sure it's clear. And then this kind of Aquaman kind of guy jumps into the pool. Koi boy. Koi boy. Jumps into this river and, or, yep, river. Yep. Mm-hmm. Jumps in and he sees this like block weird thing and he touches it. Bad idea. And it runs off. And then it's the alien girl have Tony Tony Stark in this slimy, greeny cage. So she used her own body to make a cage out of it. And so yeah. she's put him in the lake, yeah. And then Squirrel Girl yells at him, yells at her, and then it just ends this. The next... Uh, next the month? Next. Doom. Doom, da 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 I really liked how they did the art. He did it really good. It's got a different look to it. It's definitely a little yes. cartoony, and and uh, uh, I definitely thought it was. It fits the book. It's kind of a silly book. Now, mm-hmm. I after reading this, I think I had a hard time understanding some of the dialogue. Did you have a hard time kind of following some of it? Yeah, some of it I had to read the bubbles twice to yeah. and figure it out. Well, I was the same way. It, mm-hmm. It's very uh, apparently she's supposed to be an engineer, and so. <laughs> Some of the stuff they talk about is really kind of jargony, and it gets very confusing. And I'm like, I, what? Yeah, I was the same way. I, I had to read a couple things a couple times. Um, for a younger book, I really thought it was really jumbled, and so I was actually surprised at how uh, much the writing did not lend itself to be very uh, flow very well. <laughs> but, I mean, it was interesting. Some of the, I liked, I think the art made it more interesting than what, what the actual dialogue did. And I did like, uh, you know, it was kind of funny once I understood things a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So would you read? Re- would you read the number forty? Would you read the next one? Yeah, to get more of it. Uh-huh. But I or... kind of wish that I had read the full series. Yeah. So maybe maybe that's what you can do one time is you can start going back and start reading the full mm-hmm. series. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, I don't I don't disagree. This was definitely a harder one to come in. I, after I read this, I was like, uh. Because I try to help select books for you that maybe you would be more interested in. But I don't think I... I think I failed on this one. This one was this not one? the best. <laughs> <laughs> it was what kinda, would you rate it? Uh, Probably like a three. Yeah. On a corn horns. I would say a three. Because would... like if you just start in the middle, you're like... Right. It's not a good jumping on point. No. no. It doesn't introduce the characters all that well. It, it so. just like is Squirrel I... Girl, Iron Man, Alien Dude. Right. Girl. Yeah. And then but Nancy. like you, I really, I, I kind of want to, I'd kind of like to start back and read the rest of the series because I kind of want to know who these people are. The guy in the brain, the brain in a jar was kind of mm-hmm. funny when he was sliding around all the, the water parks. I thought that was pretty hysterical. Yeah. He's like, it's not that water park. He's not this water park. <laughs> He's yeah. like, I'll check another water park. Yeah. So he got 
But yeah, I, I, I definitely after reading this, I kind of feel a little bad. But I'm glad you got through it. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do, let's do Hit Girl number 11. Uh, um, this that is, looks weird. I know, it's really crazy. And it's really funny because he's really not a big character on this. But um, this is number uh, 11 in the series, but it is number three of the four part of the Rome series. Each four part, she goes to a different uh, uh, city or country or somewhere else. Like the last time she was in Canada. Canada. Uh, mm -hmm. I think she was in Spain. Um, So yeah, it's been kind of fun. This book is kind of neat. This one, uh, she she got locked into a, um, oh, what is it? Underneath an airplane where the cargo goes, she got locked in a cargo hold. Uh, this assassin beat her up, locked her in a cargo hold. She ended up in Rome. Um, and then this particular assassin was supposed to steal this skull. Well, well, Hit Girl had actually re- stole it from her. Um, but they kind of explained more about the bad guy. The bad guy is an ex-nun. She is really super mean. She killed a nun. And um, she got excommunicated. And she turned into like a big mobster and she's just, she wants to raise this saint that is supposed to be uh, uh, forgiven. Like in the past he killed all these people and he had his sins that had been forgiven. So she wants to raise this saint because thinking that her sins will be forgiven. Um, but she does it the horrible way where she just kills and maims people out of the whole book. Um, but the the thief that she, she um, got... Uh, Lost the skull to Hit Girl, so now she sent her back after Hit Girl. Well, at the end of the last book, she said they have my father. So come to find out, they have this girl's the the other thief's father. So she's trying to. So Hit Girl's like, well, I'm gonna help you. She's like, let's go and find out. You know, how do we get to uh, this bad lady? So they go and they go out in the streets of Rome, and she's like, don't worry, her eyes will see us. So the guy, uh, the guy radios it in. Uh, she sends out the nuns. The nuns, uh, they go into a restaurant, and uh, the girl's like, why are we at a restaurant? And Hit Girl goes, it's the best place to tool up. And she opens this big, giant locker of all these knives. Jeez. I know, right? And so she gets ready. She goes to get dressed in the, lo- the meat locker. Well, all of a sudden, the nuns pop in, and uh, battle ensues. Lots of death and dismemberment. She cuts off a couple arms. Good she, job. I know, right? <laughs> Um, she hits her with a, with a severed arm. Like it's, it's a pretty fun book. Um, and then the art's really good. The art is really, really good. Um, and then they have a car chase where they get chased by these guys on motorcycles. Um, the guys on motor, they stop them and then they're off to, um, go battle, uh, the main, the bad, bad lady. So that's what their next goal is. Cause obviously they have one more left. Um, this is really good book. I was really surprised at how uh, much I liked it. Um, the Kick-Ass series I wasn't a fan of, but they kind of retooled it and did it did differently. And I'm not quite a fan of the direction that they kind of have been taking it in lately. Uh, but this one is really pretty true to the old books, where she's just over the top. It's really kind of action-y. Um, it's gruesome. Lots of cuss words, so probably not age-appropriate. <laughs> Um, but still really kind of in the, in the hit girl character, definitely a good continuation of, of her particular character, but it's a fun one. So I would give this probably a four out of five unicorn horns. I really enjoyed it. The art's really amazing. It fits really well, lends itself to the action. So she's basically like a hit man, except in girl form. Right. So in the book, she was, um, her dad basically kidnapped her. And um, stole her away, and then he trained her like a superhero. So she thinks she's a superhero. But Worst she father ever. I don't know. I wouldn't mind being trained by like a superhero. Kidnapped you? Well, she didn't know that. She was little. I mean, it, was, still. <laughs> it wasn't like she locked him in a basement. Like, she, she flew, what's a little kidnapping if you're going to be a superhero? I mean, come on. Okay, fair point. That would be awesome, <laughs> but like, really, you had to choose. I mean, I would be kidnapped and be put in a basement if I was to get super abilities. I'm down. I'm not. So if anybody wants to come kidnap me and train me to be a superhero, although I'm kind of old, I don't bend as well as I used to. After yoga this morning, I think I'm ready to cry. You gotta tap it. Uh, so we're gonna do your last book. Me, out. I'm not techie either way. And now we are on Unstoppable Wasp, right? Yep. 
number three. This is by Ginny. Jeremy. Jeremy White and. Brightly. And I have no idea. Garihu? <laughs> Garihu? <laughs> I don't know, but I love him. Okay. Either way, I like his art. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever your name is, good job. Yeah. So, so, one more time. This is another book that you have not read before. No. You don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> no. So, you just jump right in this one. Yes. Okay. So, they start at this location. Wasp and her friend. Wasp turns into her, like, uniform. They go off. And then this other girl takes another girl up to the rooftop. Wasp kicks some butts. Then they finally show up to the top of the roof, get some more butt, <laughs> and then she finally. A lot of butt kicking. And then she finally comes up with literally all the guys on the ground. Yeah. Little late there, but. <laughs> more people show up though. Yes. <laughs> then wasp. Then another girl who looks like wasp, but like has wings. She's like, "Don't get hurt," and then she just flies through. That and then more guys come out, and then these two people come in, and then this girl, I love her hairstyle. Mm -hmm. She's really pretty. But I think she's a bad guy, right? Sadly. I think so, too. <laughs> and she's like, get them! And then they kick some butt, and then this crazy radio guy kind of... Has a hostage. Has a, a girl hostage, and then this other girl's like, let my girlfriend go. And she's like, yay, she called me. Our girlfriend. Yeah. And then Wash shows up, and then this girl throws like a hammer, some like gloves, and throws it at him. And then this like crazy kindness girl. Her name is Finesse. Finesse. Mm -hmm. She like is like spinning. Twirling this stick. A, a hockey stick, it looks like. Yeah. And then they battle. More battling. <laughs> Dear God, how many times do you have to When battle? you fight villains, man, you gotta, you gotta be lots of battling. Yeah. Battle and then, ready. And then she kind of like shoots this girl back with something and she's like, Tahana, wasp screams. So she shrinks her with the gloves. Yeah. And so she's gonna go in there and try to save her from being shrunk too far. And then she rescues her, that radio kind of guy. She hugs it out. Yeah, this kisses this. her. More fighting. And then the girl from before Would you like her hair? Yes. She throws down this like green bottle thing. Uh huh. Green like pill capsule it looks like, except bigger. She throws it down and pop it pops and then it go shoots like a kinda Ooey gooey something. Yeah, yeah, like a slime. Yeah. Slimes her, falls down, crash. Back to another lab. Where the wasp saves, saves that girl at the yeah. shrunk. Go to this kind of weird place. And then the, there's like a hot air thingy. A Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. Zeppelin. And all the bad guys are in it. Yeah, all the bad guys escape. And they, but they escape <laughs> with this girl, this doctor. But then who's this other doctor that they have that they saved? They saved her. Wait. Yeah, see, she jumped up on the plane. But then there's this other doctor. That, so there's like, who, who is this? Is this an imposter? Or is this one an imposter? Well, or, uh, maybe. Bum, 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 bum. Maybe. It's the same doctor. But, like, they kind of save her and then they go off. No. Or it's the same That's thing. wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... See, she gets on, she gets on the plane. They, she, they try to escape. She gets on the plane. And then they, uh, they're they like, wait a minute. Why did she... If she got on the plane, then who saved... Then who did they save? So that's... And boss. Yeah, it's an Maybe imposter. in the next book. Because, see, she's right there. She's, she's running away. She's right there. See? She's running away with them. And so then, but then they save her. So there's two of her. Da, 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 da. da. Maybe she's twins. Oh, Oh, my yeah. gosh. Twins. So. Well, maybe. Let's talk about the plot first. What did you think about the plot? What's the plot? The story. What did you think about the story? I really liked it, but what book is this? Book one? This is book three. 
Mm-hmm. Kind That's of. probably why. A little confusing? Yeah. Lots of characters. Yes, like, can't we just put, like, name tags on you? And be like, I know, they they did need it. They kind of introduced them a little bit in the dialogue, but without knowing them. I knew them when I read it. I knew, I know all of them. I was like, oh, okay, except for the ones that are specifically to this book, because I've never read this book before myself. But I know all the extra characters. Like, I know the, the wasp, the extra, the other wasp. I know um, uh, all the other ones. So I, I know quite a few of them. But, yeah, I, I can definitely see what's confusing. Mm-hmm. So would you want to start at the beginning and read again? Or would you? Probably I would want to do the same for Squirrel Girl. Yeah. So you can kind of get a full, like, okay, so that's that one, that's that one kind of Yeah. to it. So, uh, what about the art? What did you think about the art? Mm, it wasn't really my favorite. Uh-huh. But I did like kind of how they did a good job on the shrinking machine and that kind of gooey stuff. And the girl with the cool hair. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I liked, I thought they were, I thought it was really neat. I, I kind of liked it myself. I thought it was fun. I really enjoyed the, it was almost a little cartoony Japan animation manga mm-hmm. style, um, which I really like. Um, I could see where you, where it's not your favorite, but I enjoyed I think they did really good with the action scenes. Yeah, the action scenes I really yeah, liked. did really well. But also on the suit of Wasp, Yeah, it's, I do like the way it looks. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of not really how she actually kind of looks. So, she's the new wasp. The old wasp was the other one that you said with the wings. Yeah. She's the one She's the one that grabbed the girl and was <gasps> up top. So, that's, that's the original who... wasp. Oh, and this so... is the new wasp. So, she that is... That makes more sense. Yes. I See, and you would know this if you actually read them. So, yeah. maybe... That, that's another thing that would probably be interesting. Yeah. I might go back and find so, the So, what would you rate it? I would probably give it a four out of five unicorn horns. A four out of five. Oh, all right. Very nice. I wouldn't disagree with that. I actually really enjoyed it. I'm the same way. I think it would be fun to kind of go back and read them. Yeah. Um, I think this is actually not a bad book for um, younger kids. Yeah. Like, uh, how old are you? I'm nine. So she's nine. So she's, I think, yeah, nine and above. Maybe uh, maybe some teen book or um, even an adult that enjoys uh, a lighter book. Um, mm-hmm. I think would enjoy it. It's kind of a fun, uh, strong female character. It's mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. But it definitely makes me want to read more. Mm-hmm. So... All right, let me do my last book, and then we'll go through my pull list, and we'll be done. What's your so, pull list? All the stuff that I read this week. All my junk. <laughs> I know, lots of stuff. There was a lot of stuff this week. We had a really big week. I actually don't think I got through all of it. So I may end up taking next week. It's supposed to be a little weird week um, where they kind of send out books a little bit differently. So I may do some of the books from this week, next week, or, or vice versa. Maybe split it up a couple through the holidays. Just depends on how we, we get things done. That looks gruesome right out there. It is pretty gruesome. So this is The Magic Order, number five. This book is made by Netflix, which they, uh, this is their foray into comic books. And so they, um, it's Mark Miller, uh, Millar, and Oliver Copiel, which I love both of them. Um, so this particular issue, they have the three siblings get together and they're, um, taking the 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 older sibling's wife to uh, hide her in the library Why? Um, because they're trying to they're trying to go battle the big bad and so this 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 other lady's evil and so she's trying to kill all of them she oh. wants the magic book in the castle but they're gonna try to protect her so the the brother and sister are kind of they get dressed and they get ready to go to kind of battle mm-hmm. and um, the the three siblings go. And they go to try to find out where um, Madame Albany is, which is the bad guy. And she's got, like, this weird mask, leather mask. You'll see her later. So the older brother kind of uh, he flips his car, and then next thing he knows, he's uh, they're inside the car, and they're trying to um, get the information out of the guy. Well, the guy's like, I'm not going to give you the information. So he goes, hit him with the book. So he literally takes a book and puts it on his head, and when he does, the guy gets trapped in the book. So they use Robinson Crusoe, and so he is on this island for hundreds of days, thousands of days, 
And so he's uh, and so he's this withered old man, and he doesn't go with Robertson, and so he's just like gone through all this torture and dehydration and, and starvation. And so then they're like, okay, let's try the. Uh, and he goes, he finally tells him, he goes, just kill me. He goes, just kill me. So uh, he tells him the information. Well, the sister gives him another book, which is the Island of Doctor Moreau. And the Island of Doctor Moreau is a book where the guy experimented on people and made them into animals. And so why would you want that? Well, they want they didn't want him. Like he's a bad guy, so they put him in this book so that the doctor could torture him more because he was fantastic. He was a bad guy. I know. I would pick some really good. See, I read all the good stuff, huh? Yeah, <laughs> but like this is where I give you all the. <laughs> See, you're welcome. I could give you all this stuff. Next time you're reading all the bad stuff. I'm over reading all the bad, dark stuff. That's why I'm probably so mean. (laughs) You're not mean. So they finally go to where the bad lady is. um, And uh, they get to her. And she's just kind of hanging out. And they're like, why are you just hanging out? And um, next thing you know, the older brother kills the younger brother. (gasps) What's Uh, with people killing Hang on. Wait for it. Wait for it. So... And they're like, why is this? He goes, why would you do this? We have your wife. You know, your wife's in it. And he's like, he goes, do you really? Well, come to find out his wife is sitting somewhere else. She's like in a coffee shop. So whoever's inside the library is the shapeshifter. He's a shapeshifter. So he kills the old man that's in the protecting the library. And uh, the older brother is talking about how they're going to, he's assassin. He started killing all the, the older uh, order of magic because he wants his child back. His child got killed and he wants his child back. So she, if she gets his book, then she's going to raise his child for him. And uh, so he's killing off everybody. So he kills his brother. And so they, uh, all these people show up and they're getting ready to kill the sister. And then it ends. Ba da da da! Can I have a good book? Huh? I any <laughs> you, you don't need to read this. It's bad stuff. Uh, I really like this. It was a good book. It is a good book. It was really good. It was intense. I didn't know. I wasn't ready for that to happen. I thought it was going to be a classic uh, Mike Millar where the guy gets all the power. All of a sudden, he's like downtrodden, and then he becomes really cool, and then he helps everybody. But this one kind of turned on its head. I mean, he killed his brother. That's intense. And now what his is sister's job... <laughs> Boy, all of your books are just about they murder, are. I know. And death, and kidnapping, and torture. I mean, it was a good kidnapping. Let's agree okay. on that. No? <laughs> I mean, what's a little... It's really? A crime. In the grand scheme of things, what's a little kidnapping? <laughs> it is a crime. So. You can go to jail. And it's also... But I mean, she became book. a superhero, so she ended up better for it, right? And you have a murdering book. <laughs> So, and I have a murdering book. Yeah. What about so, 20 billion years in prison? It's okay. It's just a little magic. How is that magic? Anyways, I have, I thought it was really good. It was a little, it was a good twist. The art is amazing. I love this artist. It's I followed good. him uh, through several things. I thought the little magic tricks that they did, because it's hard to portray magic in a book. I mean, because it's not magic is a very visual thing so with a book you know you have to uh sit there and you don't really know what's going on so to see it was really interesting to see um we you know how they put him in the book and they uh uh kind of tortured him through the book and then like it was just it was really neat to see it so the art was really amazing the story is really good kind of a twist um, I, would the book. I would rate this a five out of five unicorn horns. I really it looks enjoyed this. Good. It was really good. Probably not your thing, but it looks good. It looks good, right? Maybe, Maybe when you later. get older, you can <laughs> you can read it at some time. Um. So yeah, that was actually a pretty good week. Uh, I read a couple more on on the uh, digital downloads, but I haven't read them all. So I may save some of those for my next week's pick. And um, we'll see. But I'm gonna go through my pull list really quick, and then we will uh, wrap it up. Sound yes. like a plan? So, uh, Mr. and Mrs. X, number six, really good book. Um, Rogue and Gambit getting married. They have a little party. Some hilarity ensues. It's really good. It Uh, looks really good. It is. I really enjoy it. I'd probably give that a four out of five or five out of five unicorn horns. It's a good one. I enjoy it. Um, Uncanny X-Men is really good. It's been a really interesting story. The story's been really uh, uh, well done. The art's been really good. Even though it's been a different artist, it's kind of uh, still... Uh, enjoyable to see Ooh, the story wow. go through. I, I would write this art like 
five out of five unicorn horns. Yeah, that's really good. good art. So I, I enjoyed it. If you're an X-Men fan or if you are a Team Book fan or mutants in general, yeah, this one's really a fun read. This this whole series has been a, a really interesting uh, ride. If you're Avengers, yeah. it's okay. I Two out of five unicorn horns. I'm about to give up on it. It sadly isn't doing much. Um, I this did... book doesn't just... It's just kind of a throwaway issue. They kind of set things up. It's the, it's really a setup book. It's not the really art's anything. really good, but since you're saying like this book is kind of like going down, like you're giving it up. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 okay. It's not my favorite. It Why used to be really good, but she? oh no, what? That is She Hulk for yep. sure. And who the heck is that? That's Thor. Looks nothing like Thor, but yeah, he got his arm cut off, and now he's got a new gold arm. I like the gold. The gold arm's pretty cool. Uh, Champions, this is the last issue in this particular series. They're going to start off again in January with another number one. I'm not quite sure why they're doing that. But this one was really good. It was the ending of a conclusion of a storyline. They got transported to a magical world, and they really, it was really neat. I really, the art was really good. It the is. The story was really talented. I, I liked the, the, uh, the characters in it. Um, it actually, Champions has been a really enjoyable read, fun book, um, Nothing too heavy, but it is, there is some things, you know, they have some weight to it and some interesting things in it, so yeah, it's really fun. Some yeah, some interesting things. So I would yeah. say four out of five unicorn horns. Um, that looks very pretty. It's fantastic for a wedding issue. Ooh. So the wedding actually does not happen in this issue, but it is kind of a lead up. It's the bachelorette party for um, Alicia <laughs> Masters. So it was kind of a it was she a fun looks read. Amazing. In this she picture. does. That is a great cover. Yes. I um. Like that. So two out of five uh, unicorn horns. Nothing too exciting. It was it was just okay. Um, so this book was book number twenty seven. Mm hmm. And number eleven. Uh huh. And then candy number five. Five. Mm -hmm. And then the very the. You're killing me with these books. You need Mr. And Mr. Mr. My stuff. Put Benny my stuff. Mr. I'm not and to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Marvel. Mr. Mr. and Mrs. X. X. Book number six. Yeah. You're welcome for being So, As Guardians of the Galaxy, number four. Um, Thank you. This is, um, okay. It's not, it's not too bad. It's interesting. Uh, the Nova Corps kidnaps them, and, and they kind of try to figure out where uh, mm -hmm. Nebula's going next. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I still, I'm still on the fence of this book. I'd probably say maybe, uh. Three out of five unicorn horns. I'm not quite done with it yet, but Say still. Say the number. Or um, I, will. I did. X Men Red not... number eleven. Um, Thank this you. was really good. Uh, the art's the... really amazing. Five the... out of five unicorn horns yeah. are for the art. Like that's. I would say beautiful. five out of five for that book, just because the story's been really good. The art's really talented. They really write the characters a lot of fun. Gabby cracks me up. She is the funniest character in comic books so far. Hysterical. Um, so, yeah. And then I've got a couple of digital downloads that I'll probably read and, and we'll, we'll go over next week, I think. So, all right. Good job today. <laughs> so, if you, uh, agree with our opinions, uh, or don't agree with our opinions, uh, if you get a chance, comment and let us know what you think. If there's books that we should read, uh, like as we said, Kelly's nine. So if there's something that's more age appropriate than death and dismemberment and kidnapping, <laughs> let me know. Cause we, I'm sure she would love to read some more stuff. Yeah, um, link, comment them down below if yeah. you have, like, some more kid books. That yeah. would be really good. Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to figure some stuff out. Mm -hmm. um, if you get a chance to like, share, and subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. If mm -hmm. not, we'll see you on the other side either way. But until then, we hope your pull list is full. Bye! Bye.